My latest paper toy is this tofu tractor. It's a tofu farmer riding a tractor, tending to the tofu crops. Y yes, he's both the farmer is made of tofu and he's, but they, they farm a crop of tofu. Um, don't, just don't think about it too much. It's cute, don't worry about it. This was released as part of my monthly paper toy club. And to be completely honest, I don't think this is a very good toy. It's a little awkward to put together, mainly because of these back wheels. These wheels use a paper engineering technique that has appeared in the majority of my work for the last eight months, called cone inversion. And the reason that this time the technique resulted in an awkward build process is because I pushed that technique too far. So today I thought I'd make a video exploring the paper engineering technique, explain how it works, show some designs in which I use the technique, and talk about its strengths and weaknesses so we can fully understand why it didn't work very well on the tofu tractor. The technique works as follows. You create a cone, it can have any number of edges or be completely rounded, but in this example it's a hexagonal based pyramid. On the left is the 3D shape, and on the right, the flat template needed to create it. Then you invert the cone, pushing it inside of itself to create the desired shape. But here's the cool part. The flat template for this far more complicated inverting pyramid barely changes. Now instead of valley folds, there are some hill folds and a single extra tab. But beyond that, the layout of the shape and its net are the exact same. An inverted shape is just the same shape with the folds going the opposite direction after all. And that means we can repeatedly invert the cone knowing that the flat template will stay the same shape other than the placement of the inverting folds and the appropriate tabs to hold them in place. So why is this so useful? Well, for one, it means that we can create some very complicated shapes without adding many tabs, but also the folding lines that go up the sides of the pyramid stay perfectly aligned with one another meaning that although technically this is three separate fold lines in rapid succession, they can be scored as one single line, saving a lot of time when it comes to building the model. We can create a cone that inverts multiple times for a very low tab count and use it to make some interesting rounded shapes, like I did here for my model Flamingon UFO. The top exterior of the UFO, the interior, and the alien's body are all made using an inverted cone, meaning we effectively got the interior and the body of the alien at no additional tab cost. But where this technique really comes into its own is when you aren't using it to make full cones. Now let's walk through the process. First we take a cone, then we invert it. Now we remove the excess parts we don't plan to incorporate into the design. Here I used half of an inverted cone to build the top and internal section of the Swamp Sweeper model. By designing using inverted cones and then not using the entire cone, we can create complex looking curved sections with minimal tabs. Let's go through it again. We start with a cone, invert it, remove the excess, and now the Lava Lizard model has a flowing curved midsection. On this model, I use three different inverted cones connected to one another to create a flowing shape. The tail, mid, and neck sections only require a maximum of two tabs. The tail alone has 12 faces, but is held in place using just a single tab. Combining these inverted cone techniques together can give some really interesting shapes. I start with a cone, invert it, and then remove the excess. Then I add a separate cone, invert it again, and invert it one more time. And then by removing the excess, I can combine these two inverted cones together. Repeating this technique is how I designed the Cunning Cobra, which used three different inverted folds with different numbers of inversions in combination with one another. The middle curve and the end of the tail are all part of one giant inverted cone, which inverts three times. The way this technique is used in the Lava Lizard as a way to create curved sections with minimal tabs is the primary way I end up using this in my work. I used it to create the tail section of the terrifying Tyrannosaurus, meaning it had 10 faces, but was held in place with a single tab, as well as using it to create the arms of the clunky companion, which also had 10 faces, this time held in place with two tabs. So now that we understand how the technique works and the various ways it can be applied, let's talk about the tofu tractor design. The wheels are made up using an octagon-based pyramid, which inverts four times. The cone makes the underside of the wheel cover. The first inversion creates the top and outside of the wheel, the second the inner side of the wheel, and the final inversion creates the hubcap. So now we've covered the benefits of this technique. 
that it allows for complex and curved elements with minimal fold and tab cost. But why did this technique result in a model that's awkward to build here when it didn't for the other examples I've given? Well, one of the major issues is pressure. Folding paper and card creates pressure as the material tries to conform to the angle of least resistance. You can put this into practice right now as you're watching if you grab a piece of paper or card, fold it, and then watch as it tries to either unfold itself or refold itself. The angle of the fold, the card thickness, and the scoring technique all impact the amount of pressure a set of folds has. I might make a separate video all about internal and external pressure in paper crafts, but for now, all you need to know is that inverted cones create a lot of this pressure, and it makes the page want to lie flat. The more acute the angle of the cone being inverted is, the more extreme this pressure is, and the more inverted folds it has, the more extreme this pressure becomes. Like this simple paper spring, the more inversions the cone has, the more pressure it can build. Usually, this pressure is released across the entire length of the inverted cone section, which would evenly distribute it. Whereas, this pressure is unevenly distributed in the tofu tractor because only three of the faces out of the eight sides of the pyramid extend to having four inversions, whereas the rest have three. All of this means that when you come to connect the two ends of this section and glue the wheel together, all that pressure is fighting against you, and so even when you have managed to glue these awkward tabs in place, the page is trying to unfold the whole time, which means the pressure is not distributed evenly across the wheel, which warps the overall shape. The shallower the angle of the cone, the less pressure, but these tires use a very acute pyramid, and it inverts a total of four times, making even more. This pressure combined with the fact that acute angles can shear off when you use certain scoring methods, overall makes for an unpleasant building experience and potentially an ugly final product. Like I said, I might make a video just focusing on internal and external pressure in paper craft designs um, and all the ways we can take advantage and all the ways we can use it to our advantage in it. And all the ways we can use it to our advantage in a different video, because I feel like this is something that applies to all paper engineering but is rarely discussed or understood. Despite my personal dissatisfaction with how this month's toy came out, it did get some good reviews by members of the monthly toy club, although I do know that one member struggled to put the model together. For the next few months I'm going to try and avoid using the inverted cone technique and instead focus on other, less pressure inducing gimmicks. The rest of this video I'm just going to talk about how to build the tofu tractor. To start building the tofu tractor, carefully fold the wheel as shown, making use of the inverted cone folds and glue down tabs 1 and 2 and then repeat on the other wheel with tabs 3 and 4. Glue down the front of the left wheel's cover to tab 5 and then glue down the top of the right wheel cover with tab 6. Glue down the back of the wheel covers using tabs 7 and 8. Create the internal mechanisms for the tractor by folding up and gluing down tabs 9 and 10. Then repeat this with tabs 11 and 12. Fold over and glue down tabs 13 and 14 to create the tractor's smokestacks. Tab 15 is a fold over tab which glues the front and back of the chair together. Tab 16 is another fold over tab, this time folding around the entire back axle, bringing it into position as it's glued down. Tab 17 makes the front of the tractor. Tab 18 glues down and creates the hood of the tractor. Tab 19 connects to the bottom of the tractor and then tab 20 folds around and gets the rear axle into position. The steering wheel section of the tractor now glues down upon this using tab 21. Tab 22 covers a hole in the bottom of the tractor to create the tofu farmer, glue down tabs 1 to the face, 2 to the back, and 3 to the top. Hopefully, if anyone's struggling to build the tofu tractor, this video will help make that a little bit less frustrating. If you want to join my paper toy club and get exclusive toys like this one, there'll be a link in the description. I hope you found this video interesting and insightful, and if you have any questions, queries, or comments, I'd love to read them. Sorry this video doesn't feature a camera. Uh, I dyed my hair and it did not come out the colour on the box at all, uh, so I was feeling a bit self-conscious um, about it. So, sorry about that. Um, thank you to my patrons who make videos like this possible. Keep folding, keep gluing, and keep creating.